I'm back with that Fender 57 Twin, or Tweed Twin, reissue. The one with the leaking electrolytic capacitors. This time I've got an ESR meter with me, and I want to measure these in circuit, see how they stack up, see how the meter responds to the way they're connected based on resistances between them in certain cases, or the fact that a couple are in parallel. And then I want to compare that to uh, some brand new F&T caps uh, out of this circuit uh, to compare and contrast the ESR readings in terms of existing old leaking versus brand new uh, fresh from the factory. So uh, a recap, no pun intended, of how this set of five capacitors are configured. This first one, well, firstly, all five are tied to ground up top. Over here, from this node to this node, there's a four Henry, something like 100 ohm uh, resistance, uh, static resistance choke, or I should say DC resistance, I guess. A pair of caps in parallel here. And then if it's visible, it may not be so easy to see, a 10K resistor tying this node to this node. And then from here up to here, there is a lead hidden behind the board. And then we've got another 10K resistor here coming to this node. All right, so let's get started. Let's tie one of these up top to ground. And let's go right to left. All right, so this cap is giving me 2.4, call it two and a half ohms. Now this time I have to be careful not to have this lead also touch pin to the speaker. So, let's see. All right. Call it three and a half ohms. And again, we're measuring this cap. Let's come across to the pair in parallel. So, these two are in parallel. I'm getting about one and a half ohms. Recall this was two and a half, this was three and a half. If we average those to say three ohms per IC cap in this unit, then assuming they're all about the same, this would make sense that it's three divided by two, uh, 1.5 ohms. There is the question, however, of is the meter ignoring this cap here or is it including it? Because again, between these two nodes over here, there's about 100 ohms. So I figure one way to test that is to put a jumper across here. And it's going to get a little busy. And here. So now I've tied the positive ends of these three caps together with certainty. I'm bypassing whatever resistance may have been in the choke. And suddenly now I drop even further, which also kind of makes sense. Because if I'm saying that these caps on average show an ESR of three ohms a piece, well, I've got three in parallel. So three divided by three. I think that makes sense. All right, let's get this out of here. And let's get a set of fresh caps to compare this with. All right, let's see how this comes into focus. Hopefully that's visible. All right, find these jumpers again, because I might need them. So, Let's get 
one lead, and I'll try to keep these wires sorted out of the way. Let's get one up. Sorry for my arm. Up here. All right. So what do we have, by the way? Three caps. Negative ends are all tied together. Down here, I've got this one and this one also tied together, so they're in parallel. And I've got these two resistors here. One, the lower one, is 75 ohms. That's sort of approximating the choke in the amp. And I have another 33 kilo ohm, which is substantially higher uh, up here. Uh, right now, with these little pieces of paper in place, neither is connected. So this cap is independent. These two are in parallel. So for starters, let's see what the ESR of a brand new F&T cap is. All right, two ohms. Now again, remember the average uh, of the two that were clearly independently measured in circuit in the amp uh, was about three ohms. So I say we're in the ballpark. Now, if I come across before I even play around with these little pieces of paper. And if we measure the first two in parallel, what do we get? 1.1. So I'll call that two divided by two, give or take. All right, so the uh, two in parallel are half in terms of their equivalent series resistance, what this far right one was. So now, if we bring this on back to here, and again, currently this cap is independently being uh, measured because these two are disconnected. If I play the game and pull out this lower piece of paper, I've now done the equivalent of put the choke in the circuit the way it was in the amp. Um, currently configured behind this. Uh, so now I've got these two in parallel through the 75 ohm resistor coming up into this one over here. So there was a very slight change, but broadly speaking, I'm still, I'll say, at two ohms. So if I put this back, I come back to two ohms. So for all practical purposes, this meter is ignoring the 75 ohm resistance. So now, let's see if I put a jumper across uh, what I'll get, meaning this time I'm gonna have zero ohms versus 75 ohms connecting across. And if I do that, suddenly my ESR falls substantially because I actually have three capacitors in parallel. Now, it may not come out to a perfect number in terms of uh, the two I had here divided by three, uh, but I think we're getting pretty darn close. So as far as I could tell, this meter is doing a very good job of ignoring small resistances that might be coupling together the positive terminals of caps in the amp. Uh, and so I can pretty much trust the numbers that I get off of this for caps in circuit, whereas I have to be way more careful when I use a digital multimeter looking at capacitance values in circuit. So hopefully that made some sense. Um, and I think for now, that is all for this video. And I think the next one is gonna be, let's start cutting out those capacitors, the five big electrolytics in the amp, and figure out a plan for installing the new ones.